Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. You're going to have to bear with me in this video. We just coming back from a week at Disneyland, so I lost my voice. In this video, we're going to be covering ProCoin News article on Ethereum accused of being a Trojan horse for tyranny following MetaMask scandal, which the MetaMask scandal has kind of been like the talk of the town the past few days. And then we're going to be looking at their article on Gary Gensler where he quotes, we have to take some losses sometimes. So coming over here to CoinGecko, quickly looking at it, we're sitting at it. 1.82 trillion dollar market cap currently down 1.7 percent looking at the top 10 bitcoin sitting at 38,832 theorem sitting at 2,623 tethers tether Bin binance coin sitting at 379 xrp 74 cents terra 81 dollars solana 85 dollars cardano sitting at 83 cents avalanche 73 dollars coming over here to the bitcoin fear green index as you can see we're in this uh, extreme fear range 22 and just like over like the past three and a half four months we've kind of been living in this in this range yes we had a few days in neutral and some in the fear but like this kind of been our home so obviously you know there's a lot of fear and uncertainty still in the markets so jumping into this article it says Ethereum accused of being a Trojan horse for tyranny following MetaMask scandal. It says MetaMask users in Iran and Venezuela have recently reported issues about not being able to complete transactions using their MetaMask wallets. There may be the possibility that some users may have actually been blocked for various reasons such as legal compliance indicating that the platform is not as decentralized as some originally thought. The action to block specific users from using MetaMask services is possible since it's used gateway, gateways that is owned by Ethereum developer Consensus. So we all know about Joe Lubin and Consensus and their involvement in this whole Ethereum Ethereum scandal, Ethereum free pass scandal. It says reactions among the crypto community have been largely negative with many disappointed that the theme of decentralization might be a false conception for MetaMask. So this is a, a tweet from Brad Mills that says, Ethereum is a Trojan horse for tyranny. Consensus owns Infura and MetaMask. JP Morgan, UBS, MasterCard owns Consensus. Mm. So just just this alone, uh oh, I didn't want to do that, but like just this alone right here kind of validates what we've been uncovering and unveiling in this Ethereum free pass timeline that jo Johnny Dean and uh, Digital Asset Investor always talk about. Us as a community have been piecing together this scandal that's been taken behind the scenes, you know, with them and on video with their own words, gloating about this free pass that they got. But now we're starting to piece together everything. And kind of tying in kind of the scandal that's been happening behind closed door. Them trying to slam the door on everything outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know, uh, and, and stifling innovation within all the other assets, you know, case in point, Ripple and XRP, you know, with the lawsuit, you know, uh, on top of that. But they're trying to they were trying to set a monopoly, but they got caught. So it's like now we're 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 finding some more validity. And now you have. This whole JP, Morgan, I don't know why I keep doing that, but now you have this JP Morgan deal here where now, you know, we knew in the past JP Morgan, you know, so-called had high reservations against digital assets, a crypto space. You know, they were talking negatively about it, but now we find out that, you know, they have, uh, you know, high, high interest and high um ownership of critical ethereum infrastructure so they've been accumulating and, and owning you know digital assets case of point ethereum for years so it's like that you know they're feeding us this narrative but behind closed door and behind the scenes they're doing the opposite so now we're kind of building you know the strength of the ether or the uh the timeline that us tw twitter slews and the xrp and crypto community have been piecing together so he says consensus owns Infura and metamask jp morgan uh ups mastercard owns consensus 99 percent of of EVM transactions go through consensus. DeFi is captured by VCs and banks. Only Bitcoin is government resistant. Ethereum is not even, even insider resistant. Interesting tweet. So it says, Crypto Slate reports, as expected, the community resp uh, response wasn't pretty. The, with deceit over decentralization being a common theme and considering what's happening in Russia and Ukraine, some realize that you and I could be next. The block's VP of research, Larry uh, Cermax, said that if MetaMask is pre uh, prepared to block Venezuelan IP addresses and won't be long before they block individual IP addresses. As a result, Cermax suggests users move to alternative wallet providers. Quote, if MetaMask slash Infura is opening and willing to block countries like Venezuela by IP address, it's only a matter of time until they were forced uh, to, uh, regulators to censor individual people's IP addresses. We need alternatives. Um, we need alternatives immediately, hoping that Alchemy and others do not do this. But the latest data on MetaMask users shows there are 21 million monthly active users making it the most popular wallet on the market. As such, making the jump to a viable alternative could, could prove tricky. Brad Mills, <clears throat> the host of the Magic Internet Money podcast, tweeted that Ethereum was a Trojan horse for tyranny, pointing out that many large corporations such as JP Morgan and UBS actually have ownership over consensus. There we go. 
there we go, tying them into to the timeline that we've kind of all been preaching and, and trying to get out there to, to the, uh, the mainstream. It says, as a result, transactions done through consensus could theoretically be controlled and monitored, which makes the vulnerable to the government. MetaMask responded to the report, uh, reported issues by saying that the issues were caused by an Infura misconfiguration, but many users are not buying it. Of course they're not buying it. <laughs> they got caught. It says the recent backlash online from the crypto community also comes after the news of consensus undergoing a special audit. <laughs> Coming down here, it says it's from crypto, uh, crypto slate shares, but the relationship between consensus and JP Morgan is deeper than that. It's literally what I was just talking about. We, we, we know and the Twitter slows and the community, we're all going to con continue to keep digging and keep researching and keep surfacing and adding and compounding strength to the, the, the to the timeline that we've been developing. It says a group of 35 consensus shareholders had demanded a special audit of the 2020 deal, which saw JP Morgan acquire a stake in MetaMask and Infura. It's alleged that the consensus board had breached its fiduciary duties by approving the deal at the detriment of minority and shareholders. As a result, the group is seeking to void the agreement. Fundamental intellectual property and subsidiaries were illegally transferred from CAG into a new entity, Consensus Software Incorporated, CSI. With JP Morgan deeply in, embedded in Ethereum ecosystem, it is time to admit ETH isn't run for our benefit. Look, with JP Morgan deeply embedded into the Ethereum ecosystem, the same JP Morgan that was super negative, sharing a lot of FUD when it comes to this space. Now, you know, we're seeing we're seeing that the entire time they, they've been there. They've been there since the beginning. And it's been it's been spoken in, you know, these people that are involved in this Ethereum Free Pass scandal. It's been spoken in their own words with them on footage. <laughs> Coming over here, this is another article that kind of ties into this whole thing that we've been following with the Ripple versus SC case. That ties into the timeline, that ties into uh, the, the scandal that we're talking about. So it says, Gary Genser, quote, we have to take some losses sometime, which is quite interesting coming from uh, an SEC chairman, our current chairman, because just a year before this, you know, they're talking about how the SEC has, you know, never lost. But now you're saying this. So, like, what is he hinting at right here? And that's kind of where this article is going to. It says, did we just get a sign that Ripple SEC case will soon be settled? No, I'm not talking about this, which was circling earlier today, which he's kind of uh, quoting a tweet from. Uh, uh, digital asset investor says just saw this on a message board probably nothing but interesting anyways and the message was anyone else heard the rumor settled all staff on the SEC versus Ripple case have been reassigned a week until the news is public SEC now hiring to prosecute illegal <laughs> currencies so it says <clears throat> that looks uh, probably just looks like probably just noise so it probably is just noise but it says no I'm talking about from the horse's mouth himself Gary Gensler last year uh, when he was held up in his house for weeks on end, Gensler proudly bragged that the that quote the SC had never lost a case. Now, now a major change in tune. Now Gary is talking about how he quote needs to be willing to take some losses sometimes. It says, "Wow, doesn't even sound like the same guy, does it?" And it's telling us to watch the clip. So if we watch this clip right here, let's take a listen in. Now, over the years, the SEC has brought dozens of cases, many of them during my predecessor's uh, time. I've only been here three months. And yet, having brought dozens of cases, we haven't lost a case. Willing to litigate. This, this agency has to be willing to go into court mm -hmm. and, you know, take some losses from time to time. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, what is he hinting at here? You know, it's, it's, are they talking about, you know, the overwhelming evidence we have supporting, you know, Ripple side, XRP investor side on, on this case that they brought on Ripple? Like, do they know that they're completely backed into the corner with with not enough strength to even fight their own their own position? <laughs> so, like, is he hinting that there's going to be a settlement? So, coming down here, it says, is a settlement coming soon? With the goal all along to just delay, knowing they could never win, mission accomplished. We will see soon. It looks. Uh, we will see soon. It looks like. So, right here, the whole delay thing. I had this highlighted because when we were watching the, um, and I showed this on a past video. We were watching an interview with uh, Johnny Deaton and Digital Asset Investor where Johnny Deaton was talking about this case was dead on arrival. So he was saying how before they filed the lawsuit, it was dead before it even it was even filed. They knew that they utilized this case against Ripple to slow it down, to allow, you know, we'll, you know, Ethereum and, you know, Ethereum 2.0 to allow, allow, you know, this whole Ethereum free pass scandal to kind of catch up in a sense so they utilize it this case as a weapon as johnny deaton quoted so this delay tactic and as we see they've just been delaying as much as they possibly could 
This delay was their tactic throughout the whole time, just to slow down and hinder, uh, you know, Ripple and, um, you know, RippleNet and, and XRP and, and what they're doing that solving the UK's and utility that they have to solve a real world problem, a real world problem. And as we've seen, we surfaced it in the timeline and video footage of them in their own words. They are literally copying, when I say they, I'm meaning Ethereum, Jalupa, consists like they're literally copying the same use case and same problem solving that Ripple and XRP are set out to do. But they're saying that, you know, uh, Ripple and XRP aren't competitors, aren't direct competitors. But you're you're now you're trying to do the same thing. And it's clear that this case has been used as a, a, a weapon to delay that. To, to slow it down. And as you can see, when it comes to the XRP price in general, we've been we've been hindered this entire time. Hasn't even hit its all time all all time high from the past cycle. There's so much more I could talk about, but I wanted to highlight this delay because as you can see, all these things are connected. It all adds validity to the timeline that we've been talking about. So I want to move on to Johnny Dean's tweet. Uh, he responded to James Rule XRP where James Rule had um, put up this uh, what I forgot what it's called a poll, and he says, "Did you do you did you know about the company Ripple uh, when you first purchased uh, XRP?" So I purchased back in 2017. 2018 was a big purchase of mine and my wife's. So we did our research the best we could for what we understood. Like we knew of Ripple, but we didn't know that purchasing XRP was you know some sort of we were in some sort of common enterprise with Ripple. That wasn't the case. Like we barely knew anything. You know, we just kind of knew what Ripple was doing in regards of, uh, you know, cross-border remittances, cross-border payment transfers and all that stuff. So when we invested in XRP, it was because it was the top, um, one of the top digital assets. And, you know, unlike Bitcoin and Ethereum at the time, it had, you know, it was like under a dollar. When I first saw it, it was like, like 34 cents or something like that. And I kind of bought all the way up to like a dollar 13. But it's like, that's why we invested in it because it, you know, we saw, you know, the power in it. We saw that, you know, the use case was important. We saw, you know, the problem they were trying to solve and it was under a dollar. So that's why we invested in it. We did not invest into a common enterprise with the expectation of, you know, uh, you know, making profit on Ripple's back. That wasn't the thing. It was just like, hey, this is in the, you know, amongst the top cryptos. It's under a dollar. Let's go ahead and throw some money at it. So uh, 69, 67.9% people uh, claim that uh, they didn't know, you know, what, you know, the company Ripple and, you know, 32% say, yeah, but if we come over here to digital, uh, Johnny Deaton's uh, response here, he says, I've been in contact with thousands of XRP holders. Many purchased XRP in 2017, 2018. That's the cohort I'm in. It says the majority were unaware of the company called Ripple that sold software to banks. Most purchased because it was a top crypto, uh, crypto market cap coin and was cheap or they acquired it because it was superior technology. So that was us. We thought the technology was massive. We thought the use case was massive. It was cheap and it was in the top. I mean, that's just quite honest. Most investors, that's how it's going to be. So the fact that the SEC dropped this uh, lawsuit on Ripple and they claim that, you know, today's XRP and all XRP, especially those that sell on the secondary market, are security. It's like, how is it a security when you have <laughs> all these things here? You know, I mean, that's, that's just a real. And uh, I, I, I responded to a tweet I forgot who put it up, but I responded to a tweet and it was asking, you know, is today's ETH a security? And I said, no, it's not a security. Now, the, when the uh, Ethereum that was issued out in the ICO, absolutely that was a security. And I was saying, but if they classify today's XRP as a security, there's no way Ethereum's today Ethereum isn't a security. That's just the, that's just the, the thing about it. Not saying that I want Ethereum to fail or anything, but that's just like if if one's going to be a security, the other one's going to be security. So if XRP, if they're claimed today's XRP is a security, there's no way that Ether, today's Ethereum isn't a security. But I just kind of wanted to throw it up because this is all kind of fitting into this narrative that I'm kind of going through here. And I wanted to bring this up at the end here. It says JV says he's quoting digital asset investor says quote this has everything to do with uh, the XRP escrow and uh, JV says and just because some of us say that it's all about the escrow it doesn't mean that we think the escrow makes XRP a security of Ripple. So let's listen in on what DIA says. Issue and control a nation's money, and I care not who writes the laws. Mayor Amschel Rothschild. Now. Make no mistake, folks, everything you're watching about the Ripple, about the, SC, the SEC versus Ripple and trying to call XRP a security, what you're seeing with Ethereum and the Bitcoin and Ethereum free pass, everything you're watching <clears throat> are power struggles in, in what will be Federal Reserve 2.0. Make no mistake, this has everything to do with that XRP escrow. And it also has to do, in my opinion, with 
Um, the guys at Ripple and X and the guys at, at uh, you know Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, and and Ripple paying the toll to the powers that be. It has everything to do with these things, folks. But there's a this is a literal financial war that's being waged in this in this whole thing. Make no mistake. So, I mean, I thought I thought that was pretty powerful and it kind of ties into everything that we've been trying to uncover. For those of us that's been following it, nothing's new to us. Nothing's a surprise. We just get more validation for what's been out there in the timeline. With all that being said, stay strong out there. Be safe.